my crafty friends, it's Sharon Luska here again and I've got that part two Scrappy Tails video using the Outline Roses die set. I love this set, it's amazing. And of course, my favorite and hopefully yours too, the Assorted Leaves die set. This is fantastic. Both die sets are a must have for any stash because they are so versatile and there's so much you could do. And one of my favorites is going to be a Rainbow Rose. I got that rose from my husband which inspired me making these roses using just three little inks from Tim Holtz, the Distress Ink, and this is squeezed lemonade, picked raspberry, and in a second we'll see what the blue is, or maybe not, I'll post it. <laughs> Anyways, just go ahead and ink blend. This is just some Nina Solar White paper that I'm using, and uh, I did ink blend uh, just like a trio so that they overlapped a bit and you get the full effect of that gorgeous rainbow. And um, yeah, I went back a second time just to strengthen up the colors, but really it looked great with one go. And uh, whatever you like to do, uh, you can do any type of like blending for the backgrounds of these roses. The outline is absolutely fabulous. So I also wanted to say, uh, if you have not subscribed to my channel, I sure would love it if you would. I know that there's so many people supporting me, watching my videos, leaving awesome supportive comments and thumbs up, sharing the videos with their friends, and of course using my affiliate links. Uh, they'll be in the list below with the products that I've used today and of course it helps me out a little bit when you do make your purchases. If you're not purchasing today, just pop back. Grab that link if you're gonna link if you're gonna buy from Scrappy Tails. Anyways, I pulled some rainbow pattern paper out of my stash and we are using up pattern paper in this series, so we've used up quite a bit already. And I just attached it down to a little salvage piece of Nina Solar White and all I'm doing here is adding some little white outlines plus it's just fortifying my paper. Now I also thought you know I have this these foam sheets that I'm always telling you about and they are thinner than the thinnest foam tape that I have and I like that because then when I'm sending it through the mail it's not taking up a ton of space. Here is my Xyron sticker maker roll that I snapped out of the carriage. I only use it as a roll because it is so easy to transport that way and I can do so much more with it as a roll of adhesive than I can if I'm trying to do it with something else. And uh, anyway, so I'm folding it over so that it coats with that sticky on both sides of that foam packing sheet. And uh, that is in essence going to give me my own foam tape. So I also attach like a, a cutting edge, a serrated edge from uh, my parchment paper from my kitchen that was going in the garbage. And I use that to rip off the sheets when I need it for making other two-sided things. So I'm just cutting these into custom sizes and this is just going to give these little roses an extra little pop up so that we have some glued down right to the paper which is Nina Solar White as a background and some that are actually going to be sticking up. So I just pre-stuck pre these on and so I can see my arrangement here and some I'm gluing flat with a little bit of Art Glitter Glue and of course oopsie. <laughs> Well, hopefully that's not going to show up. <laughs> so that's art glitter glue that I just decanted into some awesome bottles that I got off of Amazon. And I do recommend these bottles. They I use them for everything, including my classes. And when I do classes, the girls absolutely find them fabulous too. So this one I'm gluing the bottom down underneath another flat glued rose. And I just wanted the top part popped up. And I'm just getting these into place. You figure out how you like to lay them out. I've got them laid out the way that I see fit for mine. I had one that was sticking too far underneath and I'm just gonna reuse that piece back up at the top. And then this is that long frond that was in the assorted leaves die set. I did it in some nice bright green paper from my stash. And when I'm using, use, when I've used up the tops, I like to rip a leaf off the bottom and stick it back between two of the middle leaves. And that makes all kinds of little leaf trios, which are perfect for sticking into this arrangement. Isn't it so pretty? Rainbow roses. My husband gave me the bouquet for my birthday. Wow. Now this is from scrapbook.com. It is an alphabet die set. And of course, this is handy dandy bag <laughs> for a gift bag. 
and I cut proud out and of course I was looking everywhere for the die cut with the U. Do you think I could find it? <laughs> it was in the midst of the leaves hiding and I just wanted to show you when I've got something thin like a wrapping paper or like a gift bag I usually add the glue to some heavyweight paper and then stick it down. Now if you're going to be gluing on to um, vellum use yourself some glue runner and that way then you're not going to end up with wrinkled up gnarly looking vellum. I made this mistake before and it was a mess. Now if you can't run your glue runner on your letters because they're not thick enough, pull a little piece of glue off your glue runner and just stick it down as a little piece of glue. So I have a piece of paper back behind my vellum there just so that it helps me line up my letters. Um, that way I can make sure that I've got them straight. Now you could um, use a mat that has lines on it if you have one. Of course I don't, <laughs> but I just wanted to make sure that they were decently straight. I've got them all stuck down there. Now I wasn't sure because I added more roses to the front of this than I thought I was going to add. I wasn't sure whether I was going to use the wider pieces of rainbow pattern paper or whether I was gonna go for some thinner pieces. And you know, after I looked at it, it really looked so pretty just without anything. <laughs> so three totally different looks with one card, just depending on how you put it all together, right? So alas, I went for full blown rainbow effect. So this did not stay. I went ahead and put some regular old foam tape on the backs of my rainbow strips here. They're a little bit thicker. One is a, quarter of an inch and the other one is an inch and a half. Oh, and this is a five by seven card, by the way. And then I wanted to stick this down and one of the points that I was gonna make to you guys, you can see me struggling to stick it that way. If you square your cards up to your body when you're trying to put something down straight, it will go on much better. I used to tell that to the girls when we were doing nails, make sure your shoulders are squared to what you're working on or you will always have a crooked project. I'm just putting a little bit of ATG on the vellum back behind the P and the D and that's going to just support this sticking in place on that rainbow paper. And then I'm adding a little bit of ATG on the back of the card panel so that I can wrap this vellum around and make it nice and neat and tidy once we stick it to the card base. Now we want to finish this up with of you and I need it so <laughs> and I have seasons from these awesome Tim Holtz greetings die sets and so what I cut out was of you and seasons and you're gonna see what I do with the seasons so this is just some cheapy rainbow holograph paper that I have I'm putting a little glue on when I'm using metallic paper I like to dab the glue off a bit that way it doesn't squish out on the front and make a mess. So you see here, I'm just snipping out the S and the O. So now I have so proud of you. Wouldn't that make a good pride week kind of card? I kind of thought so, but with it being all rainbowy and awesome, isn't it just good for anybody? Like who wouldn't love to have someone be proud of them? I would love that. I hope there's people that are proud of me. <laughs> Anyways, I don't even know who I'm going to give this card to, but I'm sure an occasion is going to pop up where I think it'll be an absolutely appropriate thing to do. We're going to love it. Anyways, I've got some square rhinestones here, which of course I almost called sequins. I don't know why I do that, but I do. And I just put them in to fill up the little spaces in between the flowers and then a few around the sentiment. So this card I absolutely love, but when I tried to photograph it, I have to tell you the colors did not end up even showing off nearly as beautifully as this card is in real life. But hopefully you'll get these roses or pull out some flowers that you have and give it a try doing the rose blending on it or the rainbow blending on it. Now here is our next one. And I got out some uh, unicorn ink and I was trying to get this uh, pink paper faded out and really it was a struggle <laughs> it was not fading out as quickly as I wanted so I just grabbed myself a squirt of acrylic paint and decided to give them a dab of that we frequently forget the different things that we have in our stashes and how easily they can solve problems that we encounter when we're card making I added a little bit of my dye ink 
uh, into the white paint to darken up these outline color or these outlines for the roses I definitely wanted them to be a little bit darker than the faded out pink with the white paint and uh, it worked really good to use the Tim Holtz distress inks to color it there's a whole bunch of products that we can mix together to expand the uses of them and I hopefully will get into that in a later video. But here I have a triple layer of white die cut saying prayers from Hero Arts and I'm taking some gray, a darker gray or a charcoal colored and I'm layering them back behind. If you are ever trying to make an outline, like a thin outline for a word uh, that you've die cut, using two of the specific die cuts and then just layering one up into the left and one down into the right will give you a pretty good a halo effect around your lettering and that's what I wanted to do here now I have some of this funky sorry about the traffic noises good lord <laughs> here I have some funky organza that has uh, some really cute dots on it, it looks like very bridal like and uh, I just thought it was soft and pretty and you know kind of fit the whole feel that I wanted for this particular card some of you may even recognize this paper from I picked it up on sale when um, AC Moore was closing it is a American crafts uh, product so uh, I wanted to get this layered on here and I just added a bunch of little uh, runs of ATG and then I'm gonna arrange my roses here again trying to remember the arrangement that I had and you know what sometimes it's better just to rearrange it than to kill your brain too hard trying to get it looking exactly the way it was but this time I do have myself some of that peel and stick I went ahead and put some glue in between the layers of the roses and I have some foam tape here and what I'm doing is adding glue so that that will penetrate um, this specific hunk of organza that I've put on here. It'll actually go through the organza and that's the Hero Arts die and stamps there and I did add a thin strip in uh, some gray versifying clear ink here and that's going to say sending hugs and prayers there you go I was reading it well you guys were reading it that happens a lot you know <laughs> so I wanted to get the prayers over top of those roses and then I'm just gonna take this and I like the angle that I cut it at so I took my cut off piece and layered it over top so I can match the same angle again I put a little bit of glue on the back of that and then decided that I wanted to uh, stick it underneath prayers now I'm taking a look at my leaves that I have here and some are darker they're a little too dark but I thought you know if we gave them a little bit of a blend with some of that uh, unicorn ink that that would really help tone them down and give them a really soft kind of subtle look and it's the kind of look that you want when you're sending somebody hugs and prayers right it's going to work with the background a lot better than that intense green is and I think that it has like a bit of a minty kind of you know I don't know what they call that waxy look to it but I thought that it really pulled things together beautifully once I've got them arranged I just kind of lift up the corners of those roses and squirt in a little tiny bit of glue so that that the leaves will be held into place no problem and that makes my job of putting this card together a lot easier. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I put a daub of glue on something and I try to slide it underneath, it's just a miserable effect. So the one thing that I needed to tie this together is the charcoal outline of the prayers really needs to be somewhere else on the page as well. So I just put a piece of two-sided tape down on the charcoal paper and then I cut a couple really thin strips. So if you don't have a a Zyron glue runner you can take whatever the widest bit of two-sided tape that you have put it on the very edge of your paper throw it through and cut off a couple little skinny strips on your um, on your on your own on your paper cutter and go ahead and use that as a detail line for your card so I snipped off the ends and wrapped them around the back and I'm just gonna add them to a card base here get everything squished into place and then I also have these pop uh, pop color from uh, scrapbook.com and I thought I would grab that that's the little insert that keeps it from leaking when it's getting mailed and thank God they put that in because I don't know what happens to my mail when it comes here but sometimes it's in rough shape so I just gave it a little test squeeze there and I'm gonna add a bunch of these so that we can just expand out that central image so that it has a 
central impact of what it is that we're trying to say and what it is that we're showing, but also softening it as it joins the rest of the paper. And that would be card number two. I don't know what you guys think, but I think I really like this die cut lettering over top of my die cut flowers. I think it's really cool and I think it really draws your eye right to the sentiment. So here we go with card number three. You've all seen this paper pad before. I've used it in a number of previous projects. Uh, if you look back to the butterfly one and I think a few others as well, but uh, I really love the rich bright colors and I know these are two papers that are hard to use so I'm going to show you how to use them. I also have, if you recognize this, from being around flowers and uh, it's actually a floral wrap that's in a craft and it's not quite paper, it's not mulberry, it's kind of fabric-y. I don't know how to explain it but if you've gotten a big bouquet of flowers it's probably got this stuff on it. Now we are going to take all these gorgeous little rosebuds and they've all been done up uh, just with a little bit of uh, that sage green ink, dried sage from Tim Holtz. And then I've colored up the um, bottoms of the rosebuds so that they're green and look like the little tendrils. I wanted to put some of my packing foam homemade uh, foam squares here just to pop these up and then I'm adding on the bottom of the leaves here a little bit of rolled up ATG just to stick them behind the flowers because this is going to need to look like um, a bouquet laying flat in a craft kind of paper wrap. So now that I've got that all done I'm going to take these backings off and stick these all together as one single unit and I always say save the last rows for the very end because you want them to make look them look like they're laying on something and if the last rose is kind of sticking up funny that's going to ruin the whole effect. So I'm just basically taking this and wrapping it around. You wrap it up any way you like. I'm going to slick a little ATG on the back and flip it over to hold it together and uh, I'm also going to do the little flap here too so that it doesn't get messed up while it's in the envelope and uh, I've also got some leaves now. I want them to look like they're laying on the table too so I'm bending some of them in and I'm just going to slip them behind into the wrapper here and then tuck that all back in and I think it looks like rose, a rose bunch laying down on a surface. Now of course we need some baby's breath, little ATG on the tip of the baby's breath and stick those in place and then I'm adding in just to fill it out some different little greenery here with um, what I've pulled off of my um, assorted leaves die set, the, the leaf frond that we have that has all the little leaflets on the side. And I'm also tucking in some of those um, rose leaves that I cut off of the sides of the stems earlier so that they're kind of displayed appropriately. Now I've got my last little piece stuck in here. I think that's got it looking the way I want. I'm just gonna take this little shaggy tag off the bottom so this is what I'm doing to highlight the rose bunch, is I'm taking just a corner of this decorative paper and I'm drawing a line on the back where I need to cut it, lining that up with my blade so I can cut it and I can shift it back and forth just to get it exactly where I want here. And then I'm also gonna flip the tip of this cause it's too long. So we're gonna have it look like it's got a folded end and I think that's what we're gonna look for. So I have a paper rose with sympathy uh, die set here that's from scrapbook.com. I die cut it in some gold foil paper and I'm gluing it right to my black ribbon here. And I actually have the dull side of the black ribbon up. Sometimes ribbon will have both sides that look pretty. Sometimes it only has one side that look pretty. It looks pretty, but this one's pretty good. So I'm also adding some packing foam to the back of my triangle here. I just want that to have slightly more dimension, but not a lot because already we've got lots of dimension with the um, bouquet itself, the bouquet of rose buds, uh, which I think is like a beautiful sentiment for someone for a with sympathy card. Now I'm taking my ruler and putting it down so that I can get a nice straight line of ATG. And I'm just kind of approximating it along there and that way this ribbon is not gonna go flipping and flopping all over the place. It is going to lay nice and flat and smooth to your card stock and that will keep it looking really pretty. And then we're just gonna take some more ATG and we're gonna zip it right down the length of this bouquet and then we can smack this onto the front of our card. But I am going to put a little bit of black baker's twine on this so that it looks like it's a hand-tied kind of 
bouquet pack. And the end of that's not glued down so that I'm actually able to kind of finagle the little bow here. And I tied it a little bit tighter so it puffed up the end. And then I'm just gonna squeeze a little tiny bit of glue back behind here and pinch just the edge of it with my tweezers. Now I've got a little bow. I made this bow by just tying some of that uh, baker's twine around to pull, cinch in the ribbon. Because if I want to mail this, it's going to be flat enough as long as I don't have a big ribbon knot. And that is my third card. So, so far it's been a pretty good series. We're up to eight cards. I have two more cards. Uh, I'll see if I pull them together for a video and I'll try and post them in the next couple of weeks. Uh, they're not using any branded paper, but uh, thank you so much for joining me today. And don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, tell your friends and have an awesome day. Bye.